Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. The UN estimates around 650 million people worldwide live with a disability. And despite all the legislation and scientific developments in some countries, they are still denied access to education, jobs and healthcare. This week on Learning World, we take a look at some of the projects which are offering opportunities to young people with special needs to help them challenge society's prejudices and discrimination. What about waltzing in a wheelchair or even doing the tango? Of course, many people with disabilities enjoy dancing. And in China, one special school teaches young people how to take to the dance floor and spin their wheels with confidence. Whether it's the cha-cha-cha, the salsa or an elegant waltz, no dance steps appear too difficult for this group of disabled people in Beijing. They're members of the only wheelchair dance school in China. Founded in 2009, the dancers are able to maneuver with ease, grace and speed. They train three times a week and take part in international competitions. But these moves are more than just for fun. I think dancing is good. It gives them self-confidence, improves their body agility, and dancing stimulates their learning abilities. When she's on the dance floor, Li Ting is able to escape the limits of her wheelchair. She can spin, glide and dance. For a few hours, her chair becomes a part of her. There are 85 million disabled people in China. Li Ting caught polio when she was a baby. She never took her first steps and couldn't go to school because the building didn't have the right facilities. So she decided to learn for herself. And today, at 22 years old, she works from home as a web editor having studied graphic design and fine arts. When I'm dancing, I forget all restrictions. If I want to spin, I spin. If I want to run, I run. I completely forget that I'm disabled. She got her driving license in Beijing just two years ago, and the car has brought new freedom. Three times a week, she drives to the Academy of Fine Arts and learns all the secrets of painting. She has a dream of being an illustrator for children's books. Everyone wants a better life, no matter how your body is. Maybe people who can walk admire me because of everything I do, but I really think that we are equal. I want to enjoy life and do what I want. But only 12% of disabled people living in Chinese cities can access aid facilities. And now to a less friendly environment, Afghanistan, where violence has taken its toll on just about everything. Life is full of uncertainties, particularly for children who have lost their sight. But this vocational school offers them training in different professions and a brighter vision of the future. There are around 120 blind girls and boys, mostly victims of Afghanistan's war, who study at Kabul's Blind Vocational Institute. They spend half the day learning the basic academic subjects through touch. Karima Ahmadi was only two when a bomb hit her house south of Kabul, peppering her eyes with debris. Over time, she lost her sight completely and realizing she was permanently blind, tried to commit suicide three times. Now 16, Karima is learning Braille. A sister of mine who was engaged to be married was killed and I lost my eyesight because of the dust caused by the bombing, because of the dust caused by the plane nearby. It caused me a lot of pain in my eyes. We didn't have money for medical treatment. The students are blind or have other disabilities and often face rejection in society. 
To prepare them for future employment, the second half of the day is for vocational training. They can choose art lessons, computing, or learn crafts like making brooms. A blind person is capable. A blind person is an active member of society. A blind person can learn all kinds of knowledge or science. We should not say that the blind are useless. The school first opened in 1977 but fell into rack and ruin and closed. It didn't reopen until 2004 and since then it's been struggling with a lack of sufficient equipment and trained teachers. Recently it struck up a partnership with Afghanistan's Institute of Music in Kabul. The government estimates there are around 400,000 Afghans suffering sight impairment. Many of them have cataracts that can be dealt with by surgery, but only a few have access to medical facilities and basic education services. We've seen how people who can't see or walk are trying to improve their lives. What about deaf children? Do they miss out when it comes to opportunities and jobs? We visit a school in Sierra Leone where teaching methods are resonating well with their pupils. Let's find out more. For more than 30 years, St. Joseph's School for the Hearing Impaired has been providing education for children with hearing problems in Sierra Leone. Now there are more than 250 students on the roll, some of them as young as three. The school in Makeni uses the maternal reflective method, a technique pioneered in the 50s and 60s at a school for the deaf in the Netherlands. The method is based on techniques that a mother would use to teach her child to communicate. So our maternal reflective method that we have chosen is because we want our children to be integrated into society. And uh, if they are able to talk, even if it's not very clear, uh, it means that they will be understood in the marketplace, they will get employment, and they uh, will be included in society. It's a struggle for everyone, not just for the hearing impaired, not to think of themselves as victims. The maternal reflective method is a unique approach which teaches children that they can do anything that other children can do, like speaking, singing, laughing, and having fun. First, the younger children are taught language phonetics by watching their teachers closely, lip reading and repeating the sounds back. Then they learn how many syllables or beats are in a word and repeat them too. After middle school, students can decide whether to follow academic studies or take a more practical approach, learning things like dressmaking, cooking or carpentry. There's even a farm where students learn all things agricultural, from growing vegetables to keeping poultry. Muzuin is coming to the end of her time at St. Joseph's and is hoping to go into catering. She spoke of being very scared on her first day, but it wasn't long before she started making friends. Now she says she's happy and learning to cook. And she'll work with hearing people. She said she's looking forward to going out and getting paid work with them. Thanks to schools like St. Joseph's and their approach to social integration, Sierra Leone is seeing stigmas and negative attitudes towards the hearing impaired changing for the better. Before we go, one of our social media fans would like to work on a program that can develop disabled children's cognitive abilities. Follow the comments on this program and share your ideas and thoughts. That's it for now. Goodbye. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.